Well, welcome everybody. It's great to have you with us this evening. And um, things are heating up in the kitchen. And, you know, we're heading towards next week's election on the, on the Tuesday. And um, the world is not going to end. And then you will still be able to buy groceries. They will still, the sun will still rise. Doesn't matter what happens. God will get you through it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh my. Okay. I want to read two very familiar scriptures because in order for me to lay a foundation for where I'm going this evening, I think it's very important that you understand this principle so that everything I share with you tonight, you'll keep in mind what this says. Jeremiah 29, 11, we know the scripture so well, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I want you to know that that's how God sees you. If you study scripture, you'll find out that when Jeremiah prophesies this, the children of Israel are under severe pressure, under oppression. This is not a good time for them. And God comes and says, listen, I want you to know my thoughts, my plans for you are good. And then probably thinking, really? Well, where are you? You know, it's, things are not happening the way we expect them to. But that's how God sees us. Sometimes we end up in certain places because of different circumstances. And very often, those circumstances are because of decisions that we've made. Most certainly with the children of Israel, they were in that place because of decisions that they made. So oftentimes, you know, we want to do a lot of finger pointing. But how many of you know when you point the finger, there's like four pointing back at you, right? So oftentimes we need to look at ourselves. But I want you to keep this in mind, that God's thoughts, His plans, His intentions for you are good. They're good. They are not evil. Everyone say they are not evil. So when evil things happen in your life, it's not God's thoughts and plans for your life. The Bible says in John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So you need to understand that Satan is a thief and he comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. He comes to, to steal from us. He comes to destroy the purpose and plan of God for your life. He comes to take what God wants to give you away from you. He wants to take purpose and destiny away from you. He wants to rob you of your inheritance on earth. How many of you think that God's perfect plan for the children of Israel was not a 40-year desert journey. But yet the church walks around in the desert and we go around the same mountain over and over and over because we do not take a hold of what God says as truth. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. And there's just a little carrot. So you better come tomorrow, amen? But the enemy comes to destroy. He wants to... Bring something into your life that is negative, that is evil, that is destructive. And then it's good because John gives you the opposite. He says, but I have come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly or have it more abundantly. This is Jesus speaking. John's just busy writing it. So he tells us, Jesus tells us that you must remember that when the enemy comes to you, He's going to come to do these things, to kill, steal, and destroy. But know this, that I have come, Jesus, I have come to give you life. In your journey as a Christian, you will have to deal with the voices in your head. And you're going to have to, dis you're going to, have to discern three voices primarily. Three voices that will come at you all the time. Now, many of you will have in one day more than 300 voices speaking to you. But even in those 300 voices, you must discern who is talking, who is speaking. But internally, your internal...